Okay, everybody, today is January 24th, 2023. I'm going to read a dream to you that I had back, it looks like on the 7th. Around the 7th of January, I had this dream. So, I titled the dream, Resist the Mark. Resist the Mark. Talking about the mark of the beast. So I'm going to read the dream to you. And then I'm going to read a few scriptures. And I'm not going to be on here long. So I hope everybody's doing well. I will be praying for you guys. And please pray for me. Please pray for my dad. Like uh, extremely serious, seriously. Pray for my dad. Just pray for my dad. There's my family. My whole family just needs prayer. Like I'm sure y'all's family does. So let's pray hard for one another. And knowing that our prayers are, are powerful and they're important to God. So do not neglect prayer. It will do good. And... If you've been praying for something and it's not happening, ask the Lord if there's anything in the way. And if there's nothing that, that you can see or feel that's in your life that's in the way, then keep praying. Just keep on asking. That's all I'll say about that. All right, so I'm going to read this dream. Read just a few scriptures. And then I'm going to go. So, in this dream, I was at a hospital as if I was at work. Me and about three other people were with a worker who was contracted to fix something or he was moving something very heavy. We had to direct him in some way. Someone said something to him and he said back, in very good English, that we should please speak to him with common phrases because his English wasn't that good and his understanding was limited to all common phrases, not having full understanding of individual words. So he would understand like, um, how are you? But not understand what each individual word meant, but just knew that that was sort of a greeting that people say, and it's just something nice how people greet each other. But he would not understand, you know, the grammar and the breakdown of the words. So he asked that we speak to him in those common phrases that he knew and not get too intricate because he didn't have full mastery of the language. So, um, so after we were done with whatever task that he had, it seemed that things changed and it seemed like things were very bad spiritually outside the hospital. Outside the hospital, things were very bad spiritually and dangerous in terms of being um, sucked into the current of the world. Now, I don't mean that there was violence or anything outside. I mean that the darkness was great. And the way uh, things were going and the way people thought was all threatening to pull you in. Like, it was easy to just get caught up in the world and forget about how you want to be saved. And, you know, since the world has forgotten about God and you're floating along with him, there'll be no reminders. Um, it just reminds me of that verse in Psalm that says, Blessed. Is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, 
nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Because if you do those things, you could get carried away. You could get carried away with them and get carried away with the world. But if you abide in the word, stay away from ungodly influences, media and people, um, stay in your word, press into prayer time, press into it, then those things will put you in a different flow and the wind will blow you the right way instead of the wrong way. So anyway, so things had, I seemed like I was still in the hospital, but things had changed. Um, things were going on outside the hospital, they were bad. So the man was still there. It seemed that there were no patients in the hospital, but it was still running in some capacity. Anyway, he and I had kind of joined up for protection and survival. He had two little girls. He seemed like he was sort of a Middle Eastern man. I say he was a Middle Eastern man of some sort. Arab, maybe. So he had two little girls, very young well under five years old. And I had a little girl with me too. The little girl that I had was not my little girl, but I had her with me. So there were three very young children that we were caring for. I cared for his two girls as if they were my own. And he and I were in no way a couple at all. He said to me something like, in other words, there was no relationship going on between us as, it, as in a man and a woman. We were just two uh, Christian people who didn't really have anyone else, apparently. So anyway, um, he said to me something like, no matter what, we have to resist the mark of the beast because the pressure was great like a prevailing wind. I agreed and already knew it. The situation was so pressing and serious. I began to walk, like pace back and forth, walk around and I was rubbing my hands together like this And, um, and I was praying and I was humming this one certain song that I'm going to link this song in the description box. It's a very beautiful song. But I was praying, rubbing my hands and walking and humming this song to myself. This song is called um, Living Hope. And the words are Jesus Christ, my living hope. So anyway, then, then I tried to make sure that I was in no way trying to look deep. Like I took consciousness of the fact that I was praying, you know, out in the open in front of him. You know, the Bible tells us to pray in secret. But there, there wasn't any place for me to go pray in secret. And, and you just had to always be praying. And it was just, it was nothing done to put on a show. It was just, you had to pray like that. So, a white young lady opened a door, but didn't come in. And then that was the end of the dream. I don't know what, what the significance of the young lady that opened the door. I have no idea. I have no idea. But anyway, he said, no matter what, we have to resist the mark of the beast. And it'll take constant prayer 
and, and keep a song and a praise and the word of God in your mind and in your heart so that you can resist the winds of the devil. So I'm, like I said, I'm going to read a couple scriptures and then I'm going to go and that was it. Um, okay, so, oh wow. Um, that scripture that I was quoting in Psalms is... Psalms chapter 1. Very beautiful. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. If you're light and frivolous and you're not abiding in the Lord and bearing fruit in the Lord and then you, the wind will drive you away because there's nothing to you. It says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now I'm going to go to Revelation. I'm going to read chapter 20. Verse 1 says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to the battle to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea and they went on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, 
and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Chapter 21 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more dearth, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life, of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, and having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he talked with me, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, and the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Um, Are equal. Verse 17, And he measured the wall thereof, a hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of of a man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The fourth, the first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth a sardonyx, the sixth sardis, the seventh chrysotholite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a a chrysophopress, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst, verse 21, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. 
and the gates of it shall be not shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And then this scripture from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. God bless you.